Okay, hi everybody. Um, just gonna make a quick video to go through tutorial six with you guys. Sorry, I had to cancel sections today. I was uh, doing a gym class yesterday and we had to do kettlebell swings and I have a pretty bad back and just, you know, I don't know what happened, but kind of put my back out and um, yeah, it's uh, kind of painful. So couldn't make it into uh, campus today. Um, but hopefully this video will get you through tutorial six. And like I said in my um, email, happy to offer um, extra sections in uh, our week or extra office hours by appointment um, to make up for some of these lost, uh, these lost sections. So load up tutorial six in um, our studio and we'll get started. Um, we need the car package and also the psych package. So if you don't have the psych package yet, um, install that uh, so you can get started. So exercise one, uh, we're going to look at the MSQ data set. So the MSQ data set is stored in the psych package, I believe. Um, data from the motivational state questionnaire for additional information on the MSQ. Can type that, just some extra information there. Um, and view lets us look at the entire data set and we can see we've got these um, different emotion words and people rating I guess how strongly they're feeling that emotion or something like this one two three ones twos or threes um, I don't know what blue means uh, I guess we like depressed um, yeah and some extra metadata, I guess, at the end, but uh, we're not going to worry about any of that stuff. Um, just the data. So this code here um, selects, uh, essentially, we want to focus on all these variables, idle, inspired, intense, satisfied, scared, strong. So the I emotions and the S emotions, and we just want to restrict the data set to cases that are complete uh, on all of them. So this code does that. So complete cases, uh, on MSQ idle, for example, gives you um, all the cases where it's not missing any data on idle. And then if you combine that with complete cases on inspired, now you've made it um, a vector, true false vector of all the cases that are um, not missing data on both of those things. So once you um, combine all these things, uh, you've now Cell is just a vector of trues and falses that are true for cases that are um, they have data on all these variables. Um, so then we use cell to select the data that we want to use, which we save as my MSQ. Uh, so with 2,010 observations of 92 variables, which is actually a lot less than um, the size of the full data set. So if we go in row MSQ, we can see we've actually deleted um, about half the data in the data set, which incidentally is not such a great thing to do. Um, you, yeah, like not many courses teach you the better methods for dealing with missing data. Most introductory psych courses and even graduate level courses, you just end up deleting it, which is actually not very good. Um, can lead to biased statistical estimates and stuff like that. And there's much better things you can do with missing data. It's just not many people take the time to learn them or implement them, um, which I think is a bit of a shame. Um, yeah, but uh, it's a topic you're going to have to kind of teach yourself um, is uh, handling missing data. Anyway, exercise 1A, using multiple linear regression, fit a general linear model to predict happy using all affects that start with I, idle, inspired, intense, interested, and irritable, do not include interaction terms, briefly state the results. Okay, good. So we know how to fit linear models. Um, we've done this plenty of times. Uh, we're predicting happy from all these guys. Uh, and the data, of course, is going to be my MSQ. So we fit, fit the model and look at the summary. And yeah, uh, we want to briefly state the results. So don't forget this step. 
um, you know, looking at this, it suggests that um, inspired is positively related to happiness, intense is positively related, interested is positively related, but irritable is negatively related. Um, and idle, it doesn't seem like there's a very strong relationship between idleness and happiness. Um, small negative slope, but a non-significant slope. Uh, and our full model is explaining around 40% of the variance. Um, so how would we summarize this um, uh, model? Results suggested that the I emotions explained around 40% Happiness. Uh, we could say inspired, intense, and interested, positively related, or associated, related, associated, doesn't really matter, to happiness while irritable. negatively related to happiness. I guess that's all we really need. I mean, if this was an academic paper, you'd go into a bit more depth about what these slopes are. Um, maybe their, their respective t-tests, maybe this f-test. Um, but for now, I think that's fine. Okay, exercise 1b. Calculate the adjusted R squared F value and P value from your model from 1A by hand. To do so, use simple R commands. Okay, so we've seen this. I'm gonna get um, I'm gonna get my true Y values from the model, um, the model object. Even though I could just get it from my MSQ actually, yeah, because there's no missing data. So my MSQ happy is gonna be our Y. Our Y hats are going to be from the model. Uh, they're just the fitted values. We can just grab them like that. And we know that our, um, uh, we might, might not even need those Y hats. So SSE, sum of the model residuals squared. And SST, that's going to be Y minus mean of Y. And we have to square and we have to sum. And so that's going to make R2 uh, 1 minus SST over SST. Just check it, 0 0.396, that seems familiar. Yep, 0 0.396. Um, and look, I'm gonna let you guys do uh, F uh, and the p-value for F, uh, because you've done those before. Um, I've got a hints document online, you can look at it. Um, the, oh, it didn't ask us for R squared, did it? Yeah, it asked us for adjusted R squared. So instead of R squared, I want you to get adjusted R squared, which here, this is the more general formula. The previous formula had just, um, well, it was assuming that uh, model one was the null model. So it had SST here, so as in the total sums of squares, the d sums of squared deviations from the mean, and it had N minus one here. But this is more general in that this formula can be applied to um, any two nested models. So just think of SS1 being the null model, K1 being just one because the null model just has one parameter. And then K2 is your parameters from the more complex model. And SS2 is your SSE, is your SS errors from the more complex model. Uh, and you can apply this. Then um, the F formula uh, is, uh, is here. Uh, you know that Q is the parameters that have been added to the model. So here, you just have to think how many parameters have we added to this model compared to the null model that we're um, 
comparing it to, and then k is the model parameters, n is your sample size, um, and obviously r squared, which we just computed, um, you can use in your f, um, your f, f calculation. If you want df1, df2, and then pf is the function to help you get the p value, but you've done all that, uh, so hopefully it won't be a problem to do it again. Okay, so exercise 1c. You will now fit two additional models. In the second model, you'll predict predict happiness as a function of satisfied, scared, sleepy, strong, and sociable. In the third model, you'll combine all these predictors, so the i and the s. So first, let's just fit the s model. So again, happy tilde, satisfied, scared, sleepy, strong, and sociable. Okay, replace these commas with plus signs. So, data equals my MSQ, and then we'll call it the IS mod, where we have everything, um, and I'm just going to copy and paste my I variables from up here. Uh, easy, that's all 1C asks us to do. 1D, use classical approaches to perform the model comparisons for all three models fitted above that can be performed and report which ones cannot and why. So now you know that um, in classical model comparisons, we need to compare nested models. So obviously here, um, the S mod, for example, is nested uh, within the IS mod, right? So like everything that's in the S mod is also in the IS mod. And likewise for the I mod, Everything in the I mod is also in the um, IS mod. However, the S mod and the I mod are not nested models. So they can't, strictly speaking, be compared um, via classical tests. So we're just going to use small a ANOVA to compare our S mod and our IS mod. Uh, and we can see that. Uh, the classical comparison suggests that the IS mod is significantly um, better uh, than just the S mod, and then we do the same thing for the I mod uh, and the IS mod. But what happens if we try to do the I mod and the S mod? Um, interestingly, we get we get uh, we get some numbers here. I'm not totally sure what these mean. Um, but we don't get a uh, an f value, so um, we can't use classical model comparison to compare the i model and the s model because they are not nested. Not everything in the I model is also in the S model, or vice versa. Okay, so that's pretty straightforward, I think. We don't have to do too much in terms of interpreting these, we just have to run them. Um, okay, so now it's going to get a bit more complicated. Exercise 2A, using a similar approach as in tutorial 5, and as shown in lecture, perform a 20-fold cross-validation to obtain the mean squared errors from each of the three models and differences in mean squared errors that you can use to compare models. For nested models, also calculate the cross-validated R squared. Okay, so, hints. Copy and paste all the relevant code from tutorial 5. Well, forget about that because um, we don't have relevant coverage from tutorial 5. It was uh, in a previous version of it. It did have this code, but we don't worry because we, we're going to provide it just below. All the MSE can be calculated in one loop. Uh, take the mean of the error. Calculate R squared only for nested models. Store the values of mean squared error for each model in separate array variables. Calculate the differences. So it sounds like a lot of work, but really like we've given you a lot of the code here. And really the, um, this code should um, be before exercise 2b. So instead of, I'm just going to cut exercise 2b and put it um, 
down here. Uh, actually, even below this, um, print the summary results, right? So here we get you started, uh, and we've got a uh, code that is going to let you do this 20-fold cross-validation. So I know Frederick has um, described this in class, but this is um, this is how we're going to implement it. So we set our n folds, which is we're just saving the number 20, and that could be could have been really any number um, that we wanted uh, within some limits set by our sample size, uh, and then we create this uh, folds vector. So we're using um, cut here, uh, and what cut does is it takes, um, essentially it just takes a vector and it, uh, it, cuts it, it cuts it up into equal sized sections. So um, we've given it a vector here. We create this vector um, just by going sequence one to the n row of the data set. Um, which is basically just going to be the numbers from 1 to 2010. Um, and we're asking it to break up those numbers into breaks equals n folds. Break up those numbers into 20 folds. So when we run this code, we end up with um, 20 folds, although... Uh, yeah, so if we look at what folds becomes, it's just um, a bunch of ones followed by a bunch of twos followed by a bunch of threes, and it's it's kind of equal sized groups, um, twenty groups, uh, with, and I guess what size are they? They're like um, about one hundred in each group. Uh, so you can see eighty eight. When we get to about 100, the ones start to become twos. So we've essentially, yeah, just um, divided up our, or we've now got a vector that at least can divide up our data into um, 20 different uh, small groups. Okay, so this code here is just creating uh, space for all the values that we're going to uh, compute across these 20 folds. Uh, msc.imod, that's just gonna be the mean squared error uh, for the i mod, the model with all the i vectors. So essentially, we're going to do it 20 times, so we need uh, 20 folds. And we create this, it's just 20 zeros basically. So array, zero, dim, and folds. You've seen the array command before. I think when we just used it in the past, we just had the um, we just had the two numbers, right? Like So it was just array, zero, 10 which is all this is really doing, uh, but it's just that here we've included the actual name of the command. Um, but in our commands, you don't, in our functions, sorry, you don't, you don't need to include these command names, um, but it can enhance clarity, obviously, uh, especially when there's a lot of commands going inside a, um, a function. So yeah, we create those 20 zeros to store the MSE values for the iMod. Uh, these 20 zeros, they're going to store the mean squared error values for the S models. Um, these 20 zeros, they're going to store the MSE values for the IS mod. And then you'll see we've got um, DE, so differences in mean squared error. So um, this vector here that we create, again, it's just 20 zeros. But what it's going to store is the difference between uh, the MSE for the I mod for that fold and the MSE for the S mod for that fold. So you just imagine we're running through our loop and in each fold we calculate an MSE for the I mod and an MSE for the S mod and then we're going to calculate the difference between them and store that difference in this uh, DE.I.IS vector. Um, these are going to be the differences for the S mod and the IS mod and the differences for the I mod and the S mod. And then we are going to calculate um, R squared values for the nested um, model comparisons. So uh, calculate R squared only for nested models. So this vector is going to store the R squared for the um, comparison between the I and the IS mod. This vector, the R squared for the S and the IS mod. Okay. So yeah, this is our loop. 
Um, one, one thing that uh, I find really helpful when building loops is to actually just manually set i uh, to a number. So now I've just made i1, and this is going to let you sort of just go through your loop and just build it piece by piece, uh, just making sure each part of it is working as you intend it to. So you don't have to like fill out all this code and then just like run the whole loop and just hope that you haven't made any typos or errors and then if you get a problem you have to go back and try to figure out where where the problem happened within your loop if you set i as one you can just go through and run this stuff step by step so you can make sure um, that each part is working as you intended to uh, and then you can go back and once you've built it all and then run the loop and you'll be fine so the first part of the data just essentially um, is going to create our fold specific test and train set. So what does that mean? So this command here, which um, essentially returns a, uh, a numerical vector. But what we've asked here is, um, you know, we have this, we've created this folds vector uh, and it's length 2000. But now we're asking, well, which elements of that false vector are equal to i. And so what is i? Well, in the first loop, i is equal to 1, right? So what this is basically asking is like, well, which of these numbers, um, what, no, sorry, which elements of folds are equal to 1? And you can see that like in the false vector, it's the first 100 or so uh, elements, right? So when we run which folds, um, it gives us these numbers uh, from 1 to 101 um, and that they're going to be our test indexes. So then when we use the test indexes to select data from our data set, it's just going to give us all the data that lined up with that first fold. Um, and in the first run through, it'll give us all the data that lines up with ones. Second run through, it'll give us all the data that lines up with twos and so forth. So each time we're gonna be creating a new test set um, and a new training set, because the training set, it's using um, negative test indexes. So it gives us all the, the rest of the data. So you can see the test data up here becomes 101 observations and the train data is 1909 observations. So we've divided the data set into the test and the train based on the folds vector. Uh, and each time through the loop, i is obviously going to be a different number, so that the test set will change each time. And we'll select a new 100 to be in the test set, and then the rest of it will be in the, in the train set. I think this is supposed to say fit the three models. Uh, so we'll do that. Um, We'll say i mod new. Uh, I like to just copy and paste and save time. So what I'm gonna do is just copy that guy from up there. Uh, don't forget, always change the data set. Um, I think I've said this before, but the biggest mistake people make, or the most common mistake people make, is um, not training their models on the right data or not testing them on the right data. So be careful of that. That means that S mod new, we just need to grab, where was it? This model, I'm gonna grab them both actually. Um, let's say S mod new, and is mod new, and then don't forget to change the the data. Okay, so we can run these. Uh, it's fine. Uh, we can run them now and just sort of check them that they're um, that run as intended. Um, might be worth checking at this point that these slopes are different from your first slopes, which they should be. So for the IS mod, you can see um, my intercept 213893 is slightly different from my original intercept 21868. And they're pretty close, but 
uh, slightly similar because we've left out that 100 uh, cases to um, test the model with. Uh, so then get the predictions. So I can just say maybe iPreds, where I'm going to predict from the iMod view and make sure you're using the test data. And then we can do the same for the S mod, and then the same for the IS mod. And now we need to calculate the mean squared error. So for this, it's going to be useful to um, just get our actual Y values. And remembering that they are just the true values of happy from the test data. So let's say, well, here we're going to actually enter them into the um, into these vectors now. So msc.imod, and don't forget to use indexing because we just want to um, add it to the first element of this vector, is going to be uh, what? So essentially, we need to get the errors, square them, and then take their mean. So pretty easy. So the errors are just going to be um, y minus ipreds and then squared and then we can just take their mean. Uh, it's easy, we don't need to sum them and divide them, that's all done by the mean function. So that's going to be our msc for our i mod and then we can just change it to s mod and then is mod. I think that's what those things were called. MSES mod. Yep. Okay, great. And now we need the differences. Uh, this can also be calculated outside the loop. Yes. Yeah, so you can imagine if we just got the MSEs as vectors, we can just do one vector minus the other vector, like once we're done, and in a simple step get all the um, uh, get all the um, differences. But we might as well just do it in the loop, I think. Um, so this guy, so the difference between the MSC mod, um, difference between the MSC for the I mod and the MSC for the IS mod is going to just be that guy minus that guy. Because uh, these elements will already be there um, because we'll have filled them in in this step. So now we can just subtract one from the other in this step, and whatever value that results in will get entered into um, the ith element of this vector. So we can repeat this again. I guess we got the s and the is mod, and then probably i and then s, right? Let me just double check. D dot i dot s. Yes, exactly. So that's going to give us all the differences. But now what about r squared? Uh, well, essentially, r squared's going to be fairly easy. We just need to use the um, use the, not the adjusted formula, but the um, regular formula, so SSE divided by SST. Remembering that, okay, um, sum of squared errors is the sum of squared from the more complex model, right? Sum of squared errors from the more complex model. So where is that here? Well, we don't actually have it, We've, but we do have the, the mean squared error, which is just the sum of squared errors divided by the sample size, right? So um, essentially, if we wanted to get the sum of squared errors, um, all we would have to do is uh, this one multiplied by the sample size. Um, but we don't even have to do that because the SS total, we also have the mean squared errors of the less complex model. Um, and that multiplied by the sample size gives us SST. But they canceling each other out, right? So if you have multiplied by some number in the numerator and multiply by some number in the denominator, they just cancel each other out. So this is also a, 
a valid formula for r squared, um, it's just different. It's not the sum squares total, it's the mean squared error. But because those numbers in the numerator and denominator cancel each other out, this will give us exactly the same uh, value. So we do this again for the comparison between the s and the is mode. And then we just have to change that guy. And this should all work. Uh, what did I get up to? I got up to y. So because I've set i as 1, I can just run through this stuff, make sure it's all working. And how would I make sure it's all working? Well, the best way is just to look at your look at your vectors and see, is this does this look like it should look? And it does, right? Like they're all zeros, except I've replaced the first element of it. Um, and here they're all zeros except I've replaced the first element um, and these differences are the same and the MSEs it's all the same right because um, yeah I's been one this whole time so I've been replacing the first element of all these vectors so the loop looks good looks like it's gonna work um, if I run through it, it only takes a moment. Um, and now if I look at these vectors, they've all been filled in, right? So we've done the same process but 20 times and we've gotten 20 values in each of these vectors, uh, theoretically. Yeah, looks good. Okay, so print the summary results, for example, using the sprintf command. Um, yeah, so this is just asking you to print the results, but um, I guess combining um, numeric vectors and character vectors. So for example, you can do things like um, paste zero is a useful command, I find. Um, you could say the MSE for the I model was or you could say the average MSE. And then you can add a value. So you can just actually take the mean of this vector, um, and this will all print out. So the average MSE for the I model was this. We don't normally use this many decimal places. So another thing you can do is just use the round function um, and set how many decimal places you want to round it to. So the average MSE for the I model was 0.543. Um, the average MSE for the S model. The average M MSE for the IS model was... Okay, so you can sort of see the average mean squared error is going down. Uh, it's highest for the I model reduced for the S models, lowest for the IS models, based on this um, 20-fold cross-validation. I think that's enough. Hmm. You might also want to put in, I mean, because these imply the differences, right? Um, we can't just, we could just look at that and look at that and find the mean uh, difference between the models. Um, but the R squareds may be it, it's not quite implied, so let's just say um, the average R squared or the comparison between the I and the IS model was, uh, and then we could do something like. Sorry, that needs to be a comma, not a full stop. And then we could just say the S and the IS model. Okay. So yeah, I haven't used sprintf just because it, like, paste to zero does the same thing, I think, in a more intuitive way. Uh, but you can use sprintf if you want. I don't mind, as long as you get some, as long as you print your results and you just combining these words and combining these numbers. Um, yeah, it'll be fine. So exercise 2b, use the mean and the standard error 
of the differences in MSE, draw some conclusions about the difference in model predictions. Okay, so here, I guess like the point of this is that um, we can look at the mean of these differences. Um, uh, and we can see that the it's um, 0.148, right? So we can, like, if we look back and, and we remember um, how to, how this uh, difference was created, um, it's from subtracting the MSE of the IS mode from the MSE of the I mode. So if we end up with some positive value, it means that the I mode error was greater than the IS mod error, right? So we can look at this and say, okay, well, this is telling us that um, the IS mod had less error uh, than the I mod, but we don't really know, just from this number, we don't really know how confident to feel about that model comparison, right? So like, it could be the case that just because the average was positive, it could be the case, for example, that like um, most of those model comparisons, so in most of the folds, the I model was better. Um, but it's just happened that in one fold, the IS model was just like massively better. So that pushed the average, like it was like an outlier, say. Or it could be the case that, you know, in about half the models, in about half the comparisons, in about half the folds, the I model was better. Um, and in about half the folds, the IS model was better, but there was just a lot of variation. And so when we take the mean, we end up with a positive number, but there's just a lot of noise there. So even though um, overall we see a slight difference, we're not, we're not that confident that the I model or that the IS model really is better than the IS model, better than the I model, sorry. So this is really just about trying to look at um, the spread of those differences across all our folds and seeing just how confident we can sort of feel that if we um, apply these different models to new data, the IS model really is going to perform better than the, the I model. Um, so the idea here is to create um, confidence intervals around this mean. Um, and the way we do that, uh, you'll remember from the earlier tutorial, is we take the mean plus and minus about two times the standard error. Um, uh, the standard error of a statistic is just its standard deviation. And so here we have 20 uh, estimates of this mean. So we can cre just look at its standard deviation. Uh, and I think we did this with the standard error where we took 100 samples and took the means and we just looked at the uh, standard deviation of those means and that standard deviation was kind of the same thing as the standard error or it matched up very close to the standard error um, So here that's what we're going to do. So we we can take um, mean I dot is And then we can take se I dot is Just by taking the standard deviation of these statistics because that's all a standard error is. And then we can compute 95% confidence intervals um, just by saying the mean plus two times the standard error. Um, and the mean minus two times the standard error. So, um, need a comment. I'm just going to combine them so they print out together and you can see these are the 95% confidence intervals or like I guess like a pretty roughly uh, calculated 95% confidence interval for this mean um, error difference uh, and we can do the same thing for the S and IS model comparison So yeah, um, I mean another way of thinking about this is, 
you know, we can look at the distribution of these differences. Um, and we can fit vertical lines um, around the 95% confidence intervals. And you can sort of see, um, because our confidence intervals don't include uh, zero, they don't overlap with zero, we're pretty, we can be pretty confident that there is, um, this mean is positive um, and will remain positive in, in new samples. So um, we can infer from this that the IS model really is um, reducing error compared to the I model. Um, it's not just a statistical fluke. Um, but anyway, yeah, that's, so that's how we calculate those confidence intervals to conclude. Just to look at the significance, we see if the 95% range crosses zero. In other words, is the difference absolute or relative in error across models significantly greater than zero? Type your conclusions here. So like, we would just say something like, uh, well, I haven't even really looked at these guys. Okay, so interesting. So here for the um, S and IS model, the 95% confidence intervals do overlap with zero. So here we wouldn't reject the null or we wouldn't feel confident um, in inferring that that, uh, that model comparison is different, uh, which is quite different to what we would have concluded from the classical test. So this is um, a bit interesting. So. Uh, what would we conclude? We conclude that um, we conclude that based on our twenty-fold cross-validation, the IS model significantly reduced error compared to the I model. because the 95% um, confidence intervals for the difference in MSC did not include zero. Uh, and then we might just put them in. What were they? 95% CI equals 0.04, However, um, the IS model did not significantly reduce error um, compared to the S model. Because the 95% confidence interval for the difference in MSC did include zero. And then we can put in those other ones negative 0 0.02 or 0.03 for rounding uh, 0.11. Okay, um, that'll do it. Uh, for tutorial six, as always, if you have any questions, if you have any errors that you can't figure out, uh, feel free to email me. Apologies again for missing uh, missing section today, um, but yeah, I couldn't couldn't make it really. Um, yeah, uh, good luck with it. Um, email me if you have any questions or problems. Okay, I'll see you next week. Bye.